Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the last week in Hardware News. We're talking about HBM2 updates and the production schedule by Samsung today, along with some additional news items on the AMD Threadripper Ryzen boxes that were shown. Not really much to say there other than show them. <laughs> She's fine, she jumped down. <laughs> and the um, we've got news on a possible Corsair acquisition that was discussed a lot last week. Hasn't really gotten any new updates since then. We'll be talking new SSDs, gigabytes merging of their graphics and motherboard divisions, and a couple of miscellaneous news items. Before that, this is brought to you by EVGA's CLC280 liquid cooler for CPUs, which we previously benchmarked and found to be a high performer given its relative silence to the temperature output. Learn more about this $140 cooler at the link in the description below. The first major news item is Samsung's HBM2 production. It looks like they're boosting production for 2018. So by the first half of 2018, Samsung is anticipating that more than 50% of its HBM2 production in total will be moving to the new 8 gigabyte HBM2 stacks. So that will, one, be useful for what AMD's needs are, and two, it's just a shift in general in the global market as people are moving towards more utilization of HBM2. On the front of Gigabyte and their merger of the graphics and motherboard divisions, Gigabyte shipped about 1 million fewer motherboards in 2016 than 2015, 900,000 to be exact, and that number along with just changes in the business units in general means that the company is now merging its graphics and motherboard divisions. ASP overall is higher and revenue hiked up despite the 900,000 fewer motherboard shipments in 2016, but the company is merging the divisions regardless and will be keeping the Aorus branding continuing on as a consumer targeted brand for gaming products. This means you should expect more of the Aorus branding on motherboards and on video cards. This next one is pretty straightforward and there's not really a lot to say. AMD posted their box and box art for the Threadripper processors on Twitter. That's all there is to say. You can look at it if you're curious. Uh, but we know what it's gonna ship in. We don't know anything else about the box or anything like that. Uh, but they're definitely at least going somewhat back to the old tins, if anyone remembers those. The tins from the processors prior to the high-end FX series were part of the branding and the image of those high-end CPUs. So looks like they're at least moving back towards that direction with Threadripper, which makes sense for a higher-end product, but of course it is more money spent on packaging. That's just the trade you start to make, though, as an enthusiast when you buy high-end stuff. The next part, uh, there's a possible Corsair semi-acquisition. We don't know the full details yet. This was initially reported by Reuters. Tech Power Up followed up and got some uh, not fully validated or disclosed sources to talk further about what's going on. But basically, uh, Reuters said that Corsair is in talks with a company called Eagle Tree Capital, and they are looking at a possible acquisition summing more than $500 million. The initial report suggested that Corsair would be entirely purchased by Eagle Tree Capital. But in follow-up reporting done by Tech Power Up with their sources, it seems that only the shares owned by the Francisco partners who currently hold shares in Corsair would be the part that's up for sale to Eagle Tree Capital. So Francisco Partners currently holds a $75 million stake in the company, at least at the time that they bought it. One would assume that Eagle Tree would pay more for that stake because the company has grown in value since that initial purchase. And uh, this is allegedly the only part of the company that's up for sale. So it wouldn't be a full sale. And it looks like the, uh, the current leadership would remain as is, but we don't know any further details. So uh, as usual, full grain of salt or uh, shaker of salt in this case, or bucket of salt with the news, but that's kind of what's been floating around in rumors in the last week. In SSD news, Seagate is returning to the SSD market with a new low cost series of SSDs, the Nitro, 141 series will offer six models, all SATA based and using TLC NAND. The lowest cost to capacity ratio is in the 256 gigabyte models and is currently looking to be selling for $85. Other capacities offered include 240, 485, 12, 960, and 1024 gigabytes or one terabyte. All drives are in the 2.5 inch form factor, offer up to 300 terabytes of total bytes written and a 1.5 million MTBF rating. Seagate has the six models demarcated between performance, endurance, and cost-competitive capacities. 
All drives come with a five-year warranty. Western Digital's Blue Series and SanDisk's Ultra Series of SSDs are also seeing an update to the 3D BICS flash and will offer higher capacities up to one terabyte for Western Digital Blue and two terabytes for SanDisk Ultra. The new drives are said to be shipping, but it is not known when retailers or if they have already will be receiving the new stock. Both the WD Blue and SanDisk Ultra use identical hardware, 64 layer TLC provided by SanDisk and a Marvell 88SS1074 controller. The WD Blue units will be offered in both 2.5 inch and M.2 options and SanDisk looks to only offer a 2.5 inch configuration. As before, both series of drives will operate via the SATA 6 gigabit per second interface. Prices for the refreshed WD Blue and SanDisk Ultra start at $90 and $100 respectively. With the craze surrounding M.2 cooling lately, we can't seem to escape another company shipping another M.2 cooler each week. AlphaCool is now adding two more to the mix. So they've got the HDX3 and HDX2. The HDX2 is a passive solution. It will support 80 millimeter form factor M.2 devices on a PCIe expansion card. And then the HDX3 will use a nickel plated copper water block and standard G quarter inch threaded fittings for its cooling. So it fits into an open loop. The HDX2 is using a large aluminum heat sink and then just passive operation. We need to look into this more because it seems people keep pushing these heat sinks. And as we've said in the past, you really just kind of want to cool the controller and leave everything else alone. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if endurance is hindered in any meaningful way by cooling the flash with liquid, because that really brings temperatures down a lot more than what they would be designed to operate at. Uh, and with flash, cooler isn't better. With controllers, that is the case though. But either way, AlphaCool has got some new M.2 SSD coolers coming out. In miscellaneous news, Arctic Cooling is preparing for Threadripper and they're priming their line of liquid freezer AIOs for the TR4 socket. The liquid freezer line of coolers all use a 12 volt water pump, copper cold plates, and radiators in sizes of 360, 240, and 120 millimeters. All radiators come equipped with Arctic Cooling's F12 120 millimeter fans. The liquid freezer 360 offers a TDP of 300 watts while the 240 and 120 versions offer TDPs of 250 watts. Presently, the Liquid Freezer 360 sells for $140, the 240 for $100, and the 120 for $86. If you ever needed 16 fan headers on a motherboard, Asus, I suppose, has you covered going forward. The ROG Crosshair 6 Extreme is Asus's next line of X370 motherboards for the Ryzen CPUs. This is not for Threadripper, mind you. And the base unit of the Crosshair 6 Extreme includes 13 fan headers on the board. They have a, an expansion card that gives you another three, bringing the total up to 16 if you really needed that. The board is also targeted pretty much entirely at overclocking enthusiasts and water cooling enthusiasts. Additionally, it's got addressable LEDs and an RGB header, two reinforced PCIe X16 slots, which these days is kind of standard now and then the onboard 802.11 AC Wi-Fi with Bluetooth support as well. So that board is coming out at a price of about $350 starting in August, just after the Threadripper release. Corsair introduced the new RMX White series, extending a white hue to the company's RM850X, 850W, and 750W power supplies. The PSUs are 80 plus gold certified, fully modular, and come with a 135 millimeter rifle bearing fan. Additionally, the PSUs offer heavy duty productions as expected. The MTBF is rated at 100,000 hours and there's a 10 year warranty attached. The RMX White Series will come with cables individually sleeved with paracord and an assortment of cable combs. The RMX White Series 850X is $170 while the 750X is $150. And then as a final note, this one is game news, not hardware news, but interesting to pay attention to given that the StarCraft remake is in the mix. Blizzard, as of this past week, laid off its composer, Russell Brower, best known for work in World of Warcraft, StarCraft II, Overwatch, the Diablo series, and basically everything that they've worked on. Uh, he announced via Facebook that he'd been laid off and said that his job was eliminated as part of a sound decentralization initiative. Had to check my notes to make sure I got the corporate BS correct. So uh, Blizzard has undertaken that initiative and as such has eliminated the job of composer for their main composer they've had for a while now 
and that uh, it looks like he'll be doing freelance work for them in the future. But that's probably the, the last we'll see of Russell Brower's current full-time role at Blizzard. So interesting news to make note of. Other than that, check the article in the description below for the show notes for this show. You can subscribe for more as always. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus helps out directly or GamersNexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one, which is our new anniversary edition design. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.